Hello, does everyone can hear my voice? Hello? Yes, it's clear. Yes, yes. very good. Yes. Yes. It's good. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Does Chair Professor Koba? Does Professor Koba I'm here? here? I, I'm here. Oh, good to, good to know you. Uh, I'm the MC in this room. Yes, I'm Jesse. Hello, Professor Koba. Hello, yes. I'm the MC in this room. Yes, and I will begin at uh, 7.52 and then to pass you the floor. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, hello, everyone. Salam alaikum. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to discussion room 1B. I'm Jesse, your MC in this room. The theme is Issue and Innovation for Energy and Climate Change Management in Universities in the Post Pandemic Time. As your reminder, this discussion will have 45 minutes, so the discussion will end at 8.40. For a five minutes break before the second panel discussion. Now, I would like to give the floor to Chair Professor Koba and Co-Chair Dr. Hachisha. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is Dr. Hachisha with us? 
Uh, yes, I am here. Hello. Nice Hi, to how are you? you? Nice to meet you too. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Professor Rouraj Dikorbar. I'm from the University of Sousse. I'm national coordinator of uh, UI Green Metric, and I'm uh, happy to share this session with you. Um, we have four presentations. So uh, uh, if you don't mind, uh, we will stop you after eight or nine minutes um, just to have uh, the time for one or two questions. Is it okay for all the uh, participants? So I guess it's okay. No, no problem. Um, our first presentation is uh, from Indonesia with Professor Fata Suleiman. Hello, uh, thank I, you. Uh, hello. So you nice to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. Hello. hello. So five hello, minutes of presentation and uh, five of uh, questions. Okay. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Prof. Korba, Mr. Ahmed. Hello, everybody. It's nice to see you all, to see you all in this virtual meeting. As we all know, our world is not looking good nowadays. There are many interferences, distractions, and disruptions. Factors because such conditions are various. But there I could highlight them into three plus one mega disruption. Global warming, industrial revolution, COVID-19 pandemic, and geopolitical issues. Those factors affect into world stability, energy crisis, food security, and worldwide economic recession, particularly climate change, one of my topic driven has caught many attention, government and private sectors, not to mention university. Ladies and gentlemen, Urteta with a vision to become an integrated smart and green university that is excellent, having character and competitive in ASEAN by 2030, and along with a three strategic mission and core value, Jawara, meaning champion, attempts to contribute to climate issue by reducing energy consumption using the newest technology. It is a building automatization system. The system allows us to monitor energy efficiency use and generate data for energy consumption research. It is uh, specifically designed to monitor and record every occurrence in electrical, mechanical, and plumbing in every building. So that every element runs well, control system equipment must be able to work independently from workstation so that system is still running and operating in case malfunction occur on workstation. BES design consists of controllers. BES is building automation system. Design consists of controllers in which each of them has access to web browser via a TCP uh, or IP networking using IP address or host name. In this BES system, the operation is implemented uh, using a software application called uh, open web. The working principle of control system is uh, BAS is as follows. An input module receives inputs from input device, then uh, processed by processor in control according to its logic, logic setup, and finally display in output device. As mentioned in as mentioned earlier, BES is enable us to monitor energy efficiency use, the data displayed from application BES and compared to the real use on the field. 
data from energy use is presented in data log and graphic data that show its trends in real time. Uh, in general, the BES system or the building automatization system is implemented at Untirta has been running and performed well as its uh, original system design. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this uh, your question, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Korba. Thank you very much for uh, thank you. the time. This is <laughs> this is a great, a great um, uh, manner to, to respect time. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if there are uh, questions from our colleagues. Uh, I have one after. Uh, yes. Our colleagues, if is there any question from uh, the audience, please. Otherwise, uh, I, I will start by myself by the first question, uh, which is, uh, it's it's okay to to to, to monitor the, uh, the, uh, the efficiency of the energy consumption, but uh, uh, you did not give us uh, several um, numbers of. Uh, the percentage of uh, what has really done or saved as uh, as energy. Uh, we, we don't hear you, Professor. You are muted. Oh, you, are, uh, you are muted. Ah, yes. Hello. Yes. Uh, we have the efficiency of energy is uh, about uh, twenty. 20%. 20% on all the, uh, the buildings? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> we, can, I, I, uh, we can control from my smartphone, from my home, uh, to control uh, uh, using of energy uh, my office. OK, fine. Dr. Yes, um, yes, I, I, I want just to continue on the same, uh, on the same direction. So thank you, uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Prof. Uh, uh, Fatah, for uh, for this nice presentation. Uh, and uh, just I, I would like to to ask, uh, you know, energy efficiency is a very interesting topic uh, in buildings, and uh, we need to monitor our buildings uh, in terms of energy consumption and so on. Um, and uh, here we can even talk about net zero building. Uh, so the, the building uh, can also generate its own energy. So my question is, um, can you integrate renewable energy to uh, for more saving of energy? Uh, um, uh, and um, if, if, you, if, you, uh, if, you, if you did so, so how much was the contribution of the renewable energy in, 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 in your buildings? Your question. Uh... We, we will start uh, build the uh, solar panel energy uh, as a uh, mix uh, energy with the uh, fossil energy from the PLN uh, government uh, uh, supply the electric uh, agency. Uh, we, we, we build the solar panel energy as a renewable energy. Uh, we have a uh, 1.03 uh, megawatt potential. Uh, uh, the place, uh, the solar panel uh, in the roof, rooftop of the building. Mm -hmm. We can so, set the energy. So, how, how the much? How much panel. was the the the, the 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 share of this uh, renewable energy compared to the energy consumption? Uh, now uh, we still uh, develop uh, step by step uh, from the totally uh, energy consumption all the building we support from the solar panel energy uh, 1.03 megawatt mm -hmm. uh, about uh, 30 percent 30 percent from mm -hmm. totally. Yeah, that's interesting. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank, you. Ahead. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, the, Dr. Ahmed, do you, would you want to present the next uh, speaker? Uh, that's okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Prof. 
so you, excuse I'll, me, you are from Sharjah University, I, I guess, huh? Yes, yes, I am univer- from, from <laughs> University of Sharjah. I, uh, I am Associate Professor in the Sustainable Renewable Energy Department, so that's why I'm more, uh, my questions would be more <laughs> related to renewable. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, so our next speaker, Prof. Uh, Stefano uh, uh, Masoko, uh, he's the representative of uh, uh, Rector University of Genoa, Italy. So uh, the floor is yours, Prof. Uh, Prof. Stefano. Is he here? Are you here, Professor? Yes, I can hear you. I hope you can see me. Yeah. So yes, the, uh, very good. How much time I am? I have been given. I have been given. Uh, five minutes presentation and three to four questions. Okay. I... And you will see something like this. Uh, I. The, one minute paper. <clears throat> if you are late. <laughs> no, 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 no problem. So, can you see Please. my presentation? Yes. Uh, yes. Great. Okay. So, I'm a prorector for the for the University of Genoa, delegate of energy efficiency. I thank you. I thank very much to be present in this presentation, and I I thank my co-author among them. Adriano Del Borghi is Prorector for Sustainability and Federico Delfino is Director of the University of Genoa and himself very involved in the subject. Uh, university of Genoa is a large university. It, is, it has some uh, 32,000 students, 3,000 international students, and we are very, very active in the field of uh, energy and uh, sustainability. We have several campus in uh, the main one is in Genoa, another very important one concerning sustainability is in Savona, and then we have La Spezia, Ventimiglia, and Imperia. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have several activities in the strategic plan involving our climate and neutral strategies between here and then 2030, with the main target in reduction of energy consumption and uh, greenhouse uh, um, emissions while increasing also the quality of life of the university staff and students. So the Savona campus is especially focused on sustainability and smart city topics. We have two subjects, two sub-projects, sub uh, smart polygeneration microgrid and the smart energy building. The smart polygeneration microgrid is uh, uh, active in the field of uh, uh, production by renewable uh, energies, uh, such as uh, PV power plants, uh, natural gas turbine, electric vehicle charging station, and grid control. We could reduce CO emissions and the reduced cost in production of electrical energy. The zero energy small buildings uh, allows to monitor and control the mechanical and electrical components of the building, among them the geothermal power plant, PV plants, solar thermal collectors high efficiency lighting. Uh, concerning the Genova campus, uh, we have activity in the installation of energy consumption monitoring system and the implementation of a micro at the Department of Economics. So the energy monitoring system uh, has a 20 medium to low voltage Stefano, you are muted. Can you unmute? Yeah, no, I hope that now it is okay. Can you hear Now it's me? okay. Yeah, now it's okay. Yeah, sorry, there was some misusing of my microphone. The data are collected every 15 minutes and the system is usable through a web service located remotely. And through that, we have, as I remember, 20 medium to low voltage measurement points. And we have a consumption, yearly consumption that could, that have been reduced from 2018 to 2020, from 22 gigawatt hours per year to 18 gigawatt hours per year. The solution allows to correlate consumption with corresponding cost, identify anomalies, waste and efficiencies, and identify plant energy serving measurements. Also, some optimization concerning the electric energy market could be implemented. Uh, the Darsen microgrid has a, a, a 20 kilowatt power power pivot power plant, two 10 kilowatt inverters, a meteor station, and a lo- local storage by lithium storage systems. And also we have involved in several other projects, like that, the Predict project, Virtus project, 
and also activity concerning the uh, uh, culture tour of the uh, students, like a mil lumino di meno, I try to use less light and energy saving week. The greenhouse emission inventory, uh, there is some figures here. So since 2013, University of Genoa performed accounting for its greenhouse emissions with two scopes, scope one, with, sorry, three scope, uh, in direct GHG emission and direct energy emission measurement, indirect GHG emission from electricity consumption and other indirect emissions. Some figures show the, the reduction in, uh, in emission planned from uh, a couple of years ago and scheduled until 2024. Uh, we are also uh, envisaging incentives for public transport sharing, free discounted public transport travel cars for the students, and the creation of university cycle paths and installation of bike racks. So uh, this is very shortly my presentation. I know that the video has been recorded, and so I hope that uh, you can uh, uh, share uh, my presentation and see my presentation. I I'm Thank you very much. Uh, Sorry. I don't know, it's, it, it, it was uh, uh, very good for uh, the timing also. Uh, before question, uh, may I ask you please to, to have just more link uh, with the uh, subject of the um, of this session, which is the post-COVID uh, situation of time. What about nowadays? Because we, we know that uh, behavior it has changed and is changing. Uh, that we uh, 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 there was the lockdown and uh, then uh, uh, sure. getting uh, back and, and so on. So we, what changed after the uh, the COVID pandemic? Yeah, uh, what happens in March? Let's say late February, March 2020. That we have a three months uh, um, very very hard lockdown, and so. We have three months of cellular account. We can monitor it, the consumption of electric energy, and there was a reduction in our university of about 30, 35%. Most people were confined to work at home, what we call it, uh, what we call it uh, smart working. And uh, then uh, by, 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 by after, after June, uh, some people could be back, but we had more, most of lecturing by remote because of all the 2020 and the first semester of 2021, we had uh, uh, lecturing by remote. Okay, and did you reach today? Uh, today you, you, you have a uh, normal situation, uh, I believe. Yeah, there is, like you, we have pl plenty recovery of all activities uh, in terms of lecturing, of uh, meetings. Okay. And, uh, did commercial. you reach the same level of consumption like in... Uh, 2019 for 2018? Yes, yes. What is dramatic in Europe and in Italy now is the very, very significant uh, increment of costs of energy because just, I can give you just some figures. Uh, in 2021, in September, uh, the cost of energy was close to 50 um, euro per megawatt hours and now it is 500 per megawatt hours. So, 10 times? Uh, 10 times, yes. Wow. Well, uh, after, uh, well, that was just for the part of uh, direct uh, energy market. Uh, well, uh, combined with the other cost, uh, the increment is closely to double, uh, which is anyway a significant cost, incrementing cost. Uh, we have Any a question. question. Yes. We have a yes. question here from the chat uh, uh, from Christian. So uh, he's asking, uh, uh, I would like to know the kind of challenges in monitoring g uh, greenhouse gases in the campus. So... Uh, could you please, uh, Prof. Stefano, uh, elaborate more on the challenges for monitoring the, green, uh, the greenhouse uh, gases in, uh, in campus? Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, what I'm most aware of, of, of because of my background, I'm an electrical engineer, and uh, is the reduction of consumption. So we are closely monitoring the consumptions so that we can provide guidelines to reduce consumption in terms of uh, 
correct use of uh, electrical energy in terms of uh, reduction, installation of in, in lighting system more, uh, uh, more close to um, very, very low consumptions. Mm -hmm. Another question or last one? Okay, great. So, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was an honor for me to participate to the conference and uh, all the best for the proceeding of the conference. Thank I you much. It's connect. always a pleasure to connect. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to share good practices and experiences with all colleagues all around the world. And I think that our network is uh, is all about that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All the best. So, so the next Thank one. Uh, just not to make a mistake, it's from Egypt. Professor Mohammed Ahmed Basumi, Benha University. Are you here? Yes, of course. Five minutes, dear colleague. The floor is yours. Prof. Mohammed, is he here? He, he shared the presentation and then we lost him. <laughs> Maybe we can wait for a couple of minutes? Yes, uh, one minute. Uh, otherwise, we will go to uh, the, the next, next presentation. Next one, and we will back, we'll be back to, to him. Mm -hmm. If he has a problem of. Uh, network or uh, computer it's more if it's low it's <laughs> always this is slow. normal yeah <laughs> yes what, what what is not normal is that we don't have this kind of issue so okay uh, uh, okay perhaps no, no, not to, uh, lose time and uh, go to the last presentation if professor uh, pandiyara jan from india here Or we will wait for both. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for the uh, participants, if I can see them. No. Dr. Pandere Jan is uh, muted, is here, connected. I think I, I can see him in the, in the chat, uh, he's, he's here. Doctor? I, I just showed him something, but uh, I think both ha have problems. We still have... Five minutes. Dr. Mohammed is uh, no more connected.
So what do you think, uh, dear co-chair? Uh, well, I think I'm 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 I'm, uh, I'm discussing with Doctor uh, Pandyaran from India. Uh, he, is is yeah. he answering? Uh, he's answering. Yeah, he said uh, available for presentation, but uh, I, uh, he's 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 here. He's uh, he's in the audience. So uh, can he? Can he? Yeah. So possibly phone? he has some some technical issue or. Yes. Yeah. Possibly. I think also. Hello. 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 Sir, shall we? Start? I am Dr. V. Pandey Rajan. Shall we start, sir? Yes, go ahead. Sorry. You can start. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, shall we wait for somebody else to present? Um, you, you can start. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll wait for uh, uh, Prof. Muhammad. Uh, okay, okay. If sir. he can okay. join us later. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I'll wait. I'll wait, sir. No, 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 you can start. <laughs> I can start. Okay, no yes, problem. Sure, sure. Uh, sir, I am Dr. V. Pandey Rajan, Director, Accreditation and Ranking, Kalasalingam Academy of Research and Education, Tamil Nadu, India. First of all, I take this opportunity to thank every one of you for giving me an opportunity to present a paper in this workshop, international workshop. My topic is not zero. Net zero, an initiative for carbon neutrality in our campus. Now, climate change is one of the primary concerns and the greatest challenge in the 21st century. Climate change, it includes global warming, greenhouse emission, and acid rain. The impact of climate change has extended beyond the increase in temperature affecting all ecosystems and communities in the world. Even human beings are also vulnerable to climate change. The increase in temperature caused heat stress, increase in all sorts of diseases. So nowadays, it has become a great challenge in the world. Global warming is proportional to the cumulative CO2 emission. Nowadays, the climate change caused by global warming continues escalating for as long as the emission of greenhouse gases continue. In order to prevent the worst climate changes in the world, global net human cost emissions of CO2 need to fall down by about 45% reaching net zero around 250. Net zero means it refers to a state in which the greenhouse gases going into the atmosphere are balanced by the removal out of the atmosphere. The term net zero is more important because for carbon dioxide emission, at least this is the state at which global warming has to be stopped. Even the Paris Agreement underlines the need for net zero. It requires states to achieve a balance between the anthropogenic emissions by sources and removal by sinks of greenhouse gases. To go net zero is to reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases and to ensure that any ongoing emissions of CO2 are balanced by removals of carbon sink. Net zero is internationally agreed upon goal for mitigating 
global warming in the latest situation. As far as this not zero, net zero is concerned, we, our institution, are following some of the best practices for not zero, net zero, which is an initiative for carbon neutrality in the campus. The first best practice which is followed in our campus is usage of renewable source of energy and that to solar energy in our campus. Our campus is situated in the foothills of the Western Gods. And we have a very vast open sky area. So we have installed a solar panel with a capacity of 800 kilowatts in our campus. It generates power to the tune of 3,200 kilowatts per hour. We have also installed solar street lights in our campus also. Now, this solar energy production, it means nearly 40% of the total electricity consumption leading to the reduction in carbon footprint at the range of 0.4 to 0 0.10 metric ton. Due to solar power in our campus, the CO2 emission is also saved. So due to this usage of solar power, which is a renewable energy source in our campus, the CO2 emission is saved to the maximum extent. Now, apart from this, so this type of net zero is not only the emission, but also removal from the atmosphere. We have a green vegetation. About 40% of the total area in our campus is covered with green vegetation. Now, this green vegetation takes up the more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere because of the increased photosynthesis, a process known as CO2 fertilization. Now, this leads to reduction in the carbon level in the campus because the green plants are the natural source of carbon sinks. Now, these natural carbon sinks that absorb and store carbon from the atmosphere, helping to reduce the greenhouse effect. Now, apart from this, this is with reference to the emission and absorption of CO2. We have taken in certain initiatives, awareness programs also. We have taken pledge on not zero, net zero for carbon neutrality in our campus. Not only that, we have given awareness to our students, to the local community people on the awareness on electric vehicles also. And we have organized the vehicle free day by the Green Army of our campus also. So by way of these best practices, such as usage of renewable energy like solar, green vegetation in our campus, and awareness, conduct of awareness programs on the global warming, then pledge on not zero, net zero, and usage of electric vehicles, vehicle free day. So these awareness programs, which are being conducted One to minute, the please. local community people, have also have given awareness to reduce the CO2 emission. Thereby, we can reduce the global warming also so that we can save the environment from the global warming. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any question? Uh, we have a question from the audience uh, in the chat. Ah, uh, so from uh, Dr. Jenny Chiu. Uh, so he is asking, is, is there other green energy sources uh, besides solar energy? For example, biogas. Um, for example, he said in his university, we have livestock farms, but uh, the amount of biogas uh, uh, is not enough to generate electricity. So they are, they are also using biogas. 
So, um, so could you could you comment on this, uh, Doctor Bandiarajan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have also the biogas plant also, but the uh, waste materials which are collected from the farm it is also being used for the production of biogas, and that biogas is utilized for the hostel purpose for cooking everything also. So apart from this. We are also utilizing the biogas also to minimize the usage of fossil fuels such as petrol, diesel, everything. So we have also the biogas plant also. Any other, sir? Uh, maybe I have a question myself. Uh, yeah, so uh, everyone talking about uh, putting solar PV and uh, reducing the emission by by using renewable energy yes, but how about the the production phase of of this uh, pv system so uh, how the pv was manufacturing so in fact we are also emitting in the production phase so could you <laughs> could you comment on this so uh, yes we we, we are uh, we are saving the emission in an operation but we have we do have uh, emission in the production phase in the production phase but, uh, yeah, so the, the, the PV, how it was produced. So, um, so, so in uh, the production phase, we, we are burning some fuel to, uh, to purify the silicon. Okay, so in uh, PV production also, photovoltaic cell, in the production also, uh, there could be some mechanisms. They could uh, devise a mechanism for usage of some other fuels which can minimize the CO2 emission. Because mm -hmm. as far as the solar energy we are utilizing, we have installed the solar panel and we are uh, we have uh, pr produced more than 3200 kilowatts of power so we have as far as our part is concerned now we have reduced the co2 emission into the atmosphere so regarding so your question is regarding production phase also it emits some co2 so they have to devise a mechanism for usage of such fuels to minimize the co2 emission even exactly. if so yes, we try we try to introduce uh, so, uh, renewable energy in the production phase. So yes, that yes, sir, yes, could, sir, yes, sir. Yes, could sir. reduce so the that, emission. So that, uh, even in the production phase, even in the utilization phase. So if you take some sort of initiatives, definitely, even in 2050, CO2 emission that will definitely fall about 45 percent, reaching net zero. Definitely, we can we can do it. So that. We can prevent, we can protect our environment. We can save our environment from global warming. From the worst climate changes, we can protect the environment. That is what I want to uh, infer in this workshop. Definitely. Thank you very much. Uh, another question, if you don't mind, please. Oh. Um, when you have a, a large campus with uh, trees, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah, small yeah. forests, Yes, sir, we have. Yes, what, what yes. Of, one of the issues is transportation. I mean, we have to transport people, to transport uh, uh, furniture and so on. How do you deal with this uh, total, part of uh, energy consumption? The total energy uh, campus, to total campus area is around 192 acres. 190 acres of land in which we have established 800 kilowatts of solar panel. 800 kilowatts of solar panel and it meets nearly 40 percent of the total electricity consumption so really we have wonderful effect we are saving the environment from co2 emission as we are using this solar my, my, my question is what uh, is about uh, more transportation than electricity I mean, people will have to travel from building to building ah. to come from uh, 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 um, some far cities and they, uh, they they use perhaps their cars, buses, motorcycles. How do you manage this part of uh, yes, uh, yes. waste or of, of uh, carbon uh, uh, emission? Emission, yes. Uh -uh. Uh, for which we have vehicle-free day. As far as our institution is concerned, we have vehicle-free day. On that day, no vehicle 
no motorcycle is allowed within the campus they have to go either by bicycle or they have to go by walk that is what we call as vehicle or, or maybe another idea we can you can also implement electrical vehicles and the electricity coming from uh, from from solar energy from uh, batteries and from, already, already we have we have electric vehicles also for mm -hmm. the transport of the students we have electric vehicles we have electric vehicles we have five electric vehicles much. the students can go from one building to another building at free of cost using the electric vehicles also so on that day there will be no movement of this petrol used vehicles that's why okay. the green army of our campus we have that vehicle free day once a week once a week so on that day everybody will be using either bicycle or electric vehicle or they will go by walk so this is a very good initiative taken by the green army we have a separate green army sir we have the main role of the green army is to conduct such programs like vehicle free day awareness on this electric vehicle similarly pledge taking blade pledge awareness on global warming so we have a separate unit called green army the students will be the volunteers and they will take all these messages to the nearby rural area also we have conducted many programs in the rural area also thank you thank you much ah, yes sir uh is no, no, no. I'm, i'm wondering if uh, professor uh, ahmed from bara university is uh, here he could make it to join us or do we have to just to close the session professor mohammed ahmed the sunni i i don't see him in the uh, in the audience sir thank you thank you very much thank any you more, any more questions sir thank you thank you very much so thank you thank you very much for the opportunity given sir thank you so much thank you thank you dr pandyar sir okay sir okay thank you thank you sir so i guess it's the end of the uh, the session so thank you to all the uh, presenters thank you for uh, my good chair thank you thank you professor i'm honored to 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 meet you all and i hope you you won't disconnect and you will continue following Inshallah. us on the next uh, sessions sure. sure uh thank you very much see you thank you thank you all thank you sir thank, thank you. you thank you so much thank you thank you thank, thank you, you. See you sir thank you very much mr chairman okay thank you so you can maybe uh, join the other session that will start uh in a while thank you bye 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 India India Hello everyone please stay in this room we still have uh, some uh, some time and then we will back to the my room So you can stay in this room or back to the my room first and wait uh, uh, for a break time.
Hello, everyone. So we will uh, close this uh, section, uh, close this room, and everyone will back to the main room. Thank you, and see you in the main room. Recording in progress. Vreau să fac asta, vezi cum va trebui să faci asta cu, cu, cu Marius de nasă dublă. Că e dacă să.
Recording in progress. Hello, Dr. Huang. Chair, the chair of Dr. Huang. Hello. Yes. Yes, yes. I'm MC today. So we will start at 9.05. Okay. Uh, yes. Yes, it's okay. okay. Thank no you. Problem. Yep.
Hello, everyone. Can you hear my voice? Welcome yes. to thank you. Welcome to discussion room two B. I'm Jesse, your MC in this room. The theme is issue and innovation for transportation management in universities in the post-pandemic time. The discussion will end at nine fifty. Now. I would like to give the floor to Chair Dr. Huang and Co-Chair Dr. Matias. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Jesse. Uh, good day, everyone. My name is uh, Yuxing Huang. I'm from uh, National Pindong University of Science Technology, Taiwan. It's my pleasure to chair uh, this session. Uh, I would like to uh, introduce um, our culture, uh, Dr. Dennis Matias. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, in this section, we have uh, uh, four uh, invited uh, speakers, and let me uh, explain the. Uh, there are some guidelines for the discussion. So uh, we will uh, invite each uh, speaker to make a, a three, four, four minutes uh, presentation to uh, to explain uh, what they have uh, done in the uh, presentation. And during the presentation, uh, participants uh, can submit uh, your question. Uh, in the discussion room, in the chat room. Um, please mention your names, institutions, and the questions. So uh, we will uh, take this question uh, to ask uh, the uh, invited speaker to answer. Uh, so please, rem please uh, make so. And uh, before uh, the uh, explain to their presentation. Uh, I will introduce uh, the pre the speaker uh, each by each. I mean, uh, I will introduce uh, uh, the speaker, and then uh, the speaker will give uh, three to and to four minutes uh, explanation, and then we will go to the second. Uh, present the second speaker. I will give uh, uh, the introduction to the speaker and then and so on. Uh, the, I think we'll go in this way. And then finish the all four uh, speakers, uh, we will go into we'll go to the QA section. And, and so let's start the first uh, speaker. Uh, the first speaker is Professor Dr. Ambaliato. Uh, he is from Indonesia. Uh, Professor Ambaliato completed his master's degree in ocean science from University of Wales and United Kingdom. He then went to obtain his doctorate degree in marine ecology from University of Sydney, Australia in 1996. With expertise in ocean marine research, he is now a professor in the marine science department, the faculty of fisheries and marine science, University de Pongolos. He also serves as the vice rector for research and innovation of University de Pongolo, as well as the Indonesian national coordinator for the UI Green Match. Uh, World University Ranking Network. So please, Professor Ambarianto, uh, you have three to four minutes to explain your presentation. Thank you for a very nice introduction. Please allow me to share screen. Can you see my screen, my PPT? Yes. Okay. 
thank you very much and good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone. I think today is a great day to share and discuss about how we deal with sustainability issues in post-pandemic time. In this session, I would like to share how we are at Universitas Diponegoro rebuild and the green and sustainable transportation system after COVID-19. Transport has the highest reliance, reliance on fossil fuels of any sectors and accounts 22% of CO2 emission. Well, it was one of the sectors most affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Emissions are likely to resume rising as demands increases and the uptake of alternative fuels remain limited. In, in Indonesia, there are significant changes in transportation before and after the outbreak. Transportation traffic is very high and dense after the pandemic time since there is no longer tight social distancing and restriction. People can go anywhere that makes more vehicles on the road. It also happened in many different campuses like Universitas Ponogoro. The existing transportation system at Universitas Ponogoro, we have four out of five elements that taking out the whole system to run in the integrated manner. From policy wise, we have uh, several existing policies, for example, parking area restriction, and then integrated link city bus. Uh, this is in collaboration with local government. We also have a uh, pedestrian walk and also, uh, sorry, uh, from policy wise, we are parking area restriction and then emission minimization vehicle policies and also one way road. In regard to facilities wise, we have uh, supported the use of public transportation by providing campus shuttle bus for student and staff. We also have integrated link city bus in collaboration with uh, local government, city local government, pedestrian walks and also bicycles for student and staff. While the education programs and initiative for continuously building up the awareness towards net zero emission, we do socialize the net zero emission concept and policies at Student Induction Day, hosted every year and in 2021 last year. In collaboration with Toyota, we were conducting webinars related to the electric vehicles. Innovation and continuous improvement must be conducted to achieve the mission of net zero emission modes and for more bigger picture to achieve the sustainable development goals on climate action. In order to achieve the above objective, we create innovation in five important elements of policies, facilities, education, program and innovations and incentive. But this is still in uh, uh, discussion we haven't actually decided yet but in hopefully in the near future we are going to decide the first one in policy wise we are going to plan to have three in one policy and then for facilities uh, we have planned to optimize the existing shuttle bus by increasing its frequency and the number of bus operated we also have planned to build parking area near the entrance of campus and optimize the pedestrian walk integrated food stall and canopy in the interbuilding pedestrian walk for the comfort of the users. Webinar are uh, also emis uh, on zero emission strategy will be conducted to reach wider audience and keeping the high awareness of net zero emission modes, especially in transportation. Adding on the existing programs and initiatives, we plan to conduct our free day. We also plan to add the fifth element, which is incentive, by arranging incentive for student and staff who use zero emission vehicles. And those are the innovation that we plan to execute at Universitas di Ponogoro as our real effort to encourage model shift to the least carbon intensive transportation option to build the green and sustainable transportation system at Universitas Diponegoro. 
Thank you very much. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Professor uh, Amabali Yanto, so, uh, your explanations. So we'll go to the uh, the next uh, speaker. Uh, the next speaker is Professor Saka Sakani. And Professor Sakani uh, is a statistic uh, professor at the Department of uh, Economics and Statistics. And Professor Andrew Sakani earned his bachelor degree in political science from the Faculty of Political Science of the State University of Milan and a doctoral degree in statistics methodologies with his thesis title models for multivariate Marcoli, Marco Foods uh, Chains uh, from the University of Trento, Italy. Uh, he is also the coordinator of a mobility group of uh, UNITO's Green Office. I give uh, uh, the uh, four minutes uh, to Professor Scani. Please explain your presentation. Thank you, hello to everybody. I'm sorry I have no slides because I read the rules and they said uh, that you didn't have to go with slides here. So I'm sorry for that. I uh, will try to describe it clearly anyway. Uh, we are dealing with two endeavors that we are uh, uh, applying at, at the moment at the University of Turin regarding uh, traffic and sustainability of uh, uh, movement uh, of commuting of all the community of the Aron University. From surveys in the, in the recent years, we know that the modal split uh, shows 70% of all commuting journeys done by car. Uh, this is not a very large percentage uh, at first glimpse, but uh, actually since we have 85,000 people in our community, this implies putting 13,000 cars on the road in full activity days. So it's quite a huge number of cars indeed. As a university, of course, we have no direct jurisdictions on roads, infrastructures, public transport, cycle paths and everything that is actually decided and governed by the local administration. So what we want to include to do is to decrease this modal split of cars, leveraging what we have inside the university. And what we do have inside is internal parking lots for cars. The management of these parking lots it will be one of the uh, uh, way that we want to use to decrease the uh, model split for cars. Uh, the, the, the basis for this management is acknowledging the existence of differences between the sustainability levels that people can achieve. And we want to do this in a very quick web-based and data-based approach. What is the method that we develop then? We define and compute an individual uh, index, which is called the Sustainable Accessibility Index. Based on the origin of the people coming to university and the destination to one of the branches, the, we use the open source routing engine, which is called Open Free Planner, and compare a car-only journey to a sustainable alternative which means combining public transport, sharing mobility, and active mobility. The comparison between these two solutions, car only versus sustainable alternative, will include a lot of things that are derived from the open source routing engines. Of course, the time that it takes to go from home to university, but also comfort and easiness of the sustainable alternative. For example, the length of the stretches of the journey, which are, have to be made on foot. Of course, if it's too long, that's not very comfortable. The number and efficiency of connections between different public transport services and so on. Uh, in the end, the way that we allocate the permits to go and uh, use the parking lots inside the university will depend on three things. The main one is the Sustainable Accessibility Index. The, this index will have a high value if the sustainable journey is competitive with respect to the car only journey, uh, which is the, uh, the other option. Of course, 
On the contrary, this index will be uh, very low valued when the journey using only your car is way faster than the alternative sustainable journey. Uh, when the, the alternative journey has very long stretches on foot or, or it, have, it has many connections which are difficult to follow for the traveler. The parking permits will then allocate it to those who apply for the for for having a parking lot in, inside the university and have a very low index value. Because when you have a high index value, this means that it's easy for you to switch from car only journey to a sustainable alternative. And of course, in this case, we want to incentive you to use other ways of traveling to university. This is the first of the two projects that I was I wanted to briefly talk about here. The second is regarding sharing mobility. UNITO, uh, that's how we call in short a university, has stipulated various agreements with sharing services product providers, bike sharing, uh, scooter sharing, car sharing, and so on that involve incentives for its community to increase the model share of, of sharing mobility, which is not very high at the moment. To define the terms of these agreements, we conducted a survey on the whole community, and they said the survey was dealing with what kind of, uh, of uh, sharing mobility the, the people, uh, people liked, what kind of discount levels could be enough to incentive people who are not using these services to start using them, what kind of subscription formulas are most, are most comfortable uh, for people. The survey uh, um, was participated by about 4,000 people who showed interest in using such sharing services. So a sizable, a considerable amount of people could be moving to this sharing mobility. Uh, for example, they want at least a 20% discount on the current market prices to go further and use these services more than what we, they, they are doing today. The results from the survey were presented to the service providers. So we met with the service providers and told them what our community wanted in terms of discounts, of uh, subscription formulas, of types of, uh, of vehicles for the sharing. And... Uh, the end of the process was a very good result because most of the service providers decided to set their incentives following the community expectations. And so in this way, paving the way for a very significant increase of use that we will be monitored in the next year. Okay, thank you. This is it. And uh, I will give you the floor again. Uh, thank you, Professor Scani. And uh, I will invite you the next speaker Professor Andrew Vasili. Uh, uh, Professor Vasili is the doctor of technical science. Uh, he has more than 40 years experience in the field of environmental protection and uh, ecological education. Uh, he's the author of uh, over uh, 1,000 scientific papers and uh, uh, 50, uh, 15 uh, books in the ecology a hand of uh, magistrate's programs and uh, uh, in, in the uh, Samara State uh, Technical University. And he also the organizer and the scientific hand of the world known Environmental uh, Congress, uh, ELPIT, uh, since 2003, uh, the expert in the international uh, of the university. So uh, let me give the speaker to you. Uh, Professor Vasily, uh, you have uh, four minutes uh, to explain your presentation. Um, Professor Vasily, please. Okay, I'm afraid maybe he is in not in the uh, this uh, discussion rooms. Uh, so we will go to the the next uh, spe invited speaker, uh, Dr. Uh, Sergio uh, Fernandez uh, de Gardilao uh, from the Mexico. Uh, he is the secretary of the Sustainability Office 
of the Autonomous University of Nuevo León. Uh, his uh, bachelor degree is in the industrial chemistry from the Autonomous University of Coahuila in 1975. He obtained his master of uh, science degrees specialized in the uh, industrial microbiology from the Autonomous University of uh, Novo Leons in uh, 1983, and the doctorate degree in biological science from the University of Havana, Cuba in 2004. Uh, so let me give the speaker to Dr. Uh, Degadio. Uh, you have uh, four minutes to explain your presentation. Please, Dr. Degadillo. Yeah, thank you very much. Good day for everyone. Um, well, our project uh, is named Conecta UAML. Uh, that involves uh, several sustainable uh, activities uh, like uh, promote mobility from campuses and city by the use of public transport. The, the project named Tigre Bus, Tigre Bus, that is a connectivity program between city campuses because we have a large city here which can travel for more than, than 20 kilometers uh, inside the city. Then we have campuses uh, distant one from each other. The main distance among campuses is uh, 10 kilometers, more or less. And uh, we started a project uh, using 11 buses with the following results. Uh, in social sustainability, sustainability aspects, the service is offered for more than 4.3 million students in a year, making 423 trips every day with an average of 40 students per trip. By avoiding the use of public transport in post pandemia, that maybe this is the one of the most important things at this time, the use of Tiger Bus assures a better sanitary conditions for students because if they go in our buses, they have a, a connection with people, just the, 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 the classmates or, or teachers and not people from the city. Then uh, this is a very important thing for, for taking care after uh, the, the pandemic. In environmental aspects, the Tiger Bus Services discourages the use of private cars between campuses helping to reduce greenhouse gases emissions into the atmosphere. The annual greenhouse gases accumulation was reduced in about 400 tons of CO2 equivalent. This data agrees with the international reports that the automobile carbon footprint is threefold the bus carbon footprint. In economy aspects, as this service is gratuit, represents an economic benefit for students of more than 1.85 million US dollars per year. The, the whole project involves uh, also the, the mobility inside campuses uh, because we have a lot of people uh, working or coming to the campuses every day. The total population of students of this university is uh, 2,400 uh, students. Then uh, the, the amount of people in, in our university city that, that is the main campus is more or less 65,000 people daily. Then uh, we are promoting that they move uh, working inside campuses or using the internal connection uh, service we have using electric automobile uh, and uh, uh, this 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 is the main things we we are having in our sustainable mobility program. That's all for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, uh, Professor uh, Dega Dilos. 
uh, we have the uh, all the uh, invited speakers uh, explain their presentation. So I would like to uh, ask uh, the uh, Professor Degardillos. Uh, you you mentioned I I, I was very impressed uh, uh, the Tigra bus the bus in your in into your uh, the campus the full campus. There are okay. so many students uh, mm -hmm. each days. Uh, they take advantage of this uh, bus service. Uh, I would like to know uh, the, how many car, how many bus, uh, it's it belong to your university or it belong to uh, the city government? Okay, we have 11 buses that makes uh, 423 trips every day with an average of 40 students per trip. Yes, it's beyond to the university. The, the the bus the property is beyond to university or excuse me, I, under, I it's owned that. by by your university, right? The bus. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. Yes, it's part of our infrastructure, the buses. Okay, it's very impressed because this uh, I think it's it's very convenient to the students. It's good health uh -huh. to the students and also good for our uh, environment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I will uh, ask uh, the, the, another question. Uh, the question is to uh, Professor uh, uh, Scagni. Professor Scagni, I have uh, uh, one question uh, to, to answer. Uh, you mentioned uh, in your first project, you mentioned they have uh, our three ranking criteria. Uh, do they have any different, is a late or different weighting uh, between these three uh, ranking criteria or they, they are the same, same, same weighting? Uh, the weights of the three criteria, I, I, in the presentation I mentioned only the criteria, which is the most new one, uh, which is the sustainable accessibility index. This is mixed with uh, the, um, characteristics of the family and with the kind of car you are using. So if you have a very large family with children, you have more chances to get the permit for the car parking. And if you have an eco-friendly car, such as an electric car, you have more accessibility to the car parking. Actually, these are weighted and the process is quite political in the sense that uh, to define weights, we have to meet with uh, constituencies, uh, uh, unions of workers, uh, representatives of students, and find a delicate balance between all these things. Because, for example, students are not interested in the criteria dealing with large families, because they mostly they don't have families yet. And so this is a criteria which is very, very interesting for working people. And on the other side, uh, students uh, very often come from far away from the, from the city and from the university, so uh, they are more interested in the sustainable accessibility index because maybe some of them have to take four different buses and connect one of the uh, with the other, and so they say it's almost impossible for me to come from that place to the university with public transport because it's too complicated. So uh, they are weighted. Uh, the weights are not, you know, fixed forever. Uh, at, the, at, at the present time, um, eco-friendly cars are not that important. So th th that's the less weight just because there are still a few, uh, there are still uh, only a few electric cars around in Italy. So it's not really relevant for the majority of people. The, the, the question of family uh, is relevant and if you really have a lot of children and they are very young, this become very prevalent. In, other, in all the other cases, the sustainable accessibility index is the main way to rank people and attribute and allocate the parking permits. Mm -hmm. I hope to have answer to your question. Yes, thank you very much. I think so, this question, the, the, the criteria, I think is very difficult to see. It's case by case. So, so sometimes, uh, I think so you have to understand what the, the, the difficulty of this, this uh, uh, applicant. 
uh, our main goal was to go beyond the old criteria because uh, until a few years ago, we used very nonsensical criteria. For example, okay. people who live far away from university, they have had a, an higher place in the ranking just because it was far away. But of course, if you have a very, stra a very straight uh, high velocity line of trains, it, it doesn't matter if you live 100 kilometers, it could be easier for you to come by train than, uh, than compared to people who are just living 10 kilometers from the university but have no public transport services around their home. So it was really uh, nonsensical to allocate parking permits in that way. And we are trying to go beyond that. It's, a, in a, it's an ongoing process. We are not actually uh, finished with, with this project. We are dealing with uh, something more than the time. Not, not, uh, at the present, the index is computed just on the time. So if car, traveling by car takes a very, very short time and instead traveling by sustainable transport takes a much longer time, you get the permit to park the car inside and otherwise you don't. But there are other factors. For example, if your you public transport services run just once a day, uh, it's very different uh, compared with the situation where your public transport services run every half an hour all day long that means that you are much more comfortable coming by bus or train to the university at whatever time you like. And that's a, a more most important for students who don't have a fixed timetable for coming to university and going back home. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I would like to the, the, ask uh, the uh, professor Ambari Yanto. Uh, I think so in your uh, the presentation you have said about you have a, a car free day in campus. Can you uh, make some explanation uh, how how it's a uh, it's a uh, it's going and uh, this the change the uh, the, the their habitants uh, to have uh, no car in the university. Thank you very much for the question. Uh, that the the, uh, the fourth slide uh, is actually still in the uh, uh, discussion. So we are thinking to have a car-free day, and we are going to give incentive and so on and so on. It isn't actually being done yet, but in still in the discussion. We were thinking to do it during Friday, and we are hoping that they. Uh, they will come by bus because, as I mentioned before, we are uh, in collaboration with local government. They also provide buses to our campus from downtown uh, city. We also have special bus for our staff and our students from downtown city, but only two buses. Uh, and from the government, they have uh, many buses and they go to campus every 30 minutes. So. Uh, I think uh, it will it will help uh, the student and staff to go to the campus without their car. And most of the students, uh, especially in those who come from outside uh, our city, Samarang, they rent uh, uh, rooms uh, close by to the campus. So actually, it's it's a very uh, close and walking distance. Or um, some of them also stay at our dormitory, which is also uh, walking distance. So actually, uh, we are hoping that the, our car free day will be successful. But we haven't actually applied yet. But uh, hopefully soon. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, your uh, experience. Uh, I would like to invite uh, our co-chair, uh, Dr. Uh, Matthias, uh, do you do you have any uh, question or comment to our invited speakers? Thank you, thank you, Professor Yu Xian Wang, uh, and welcome everyone. I'm uh, I'm Dennis Matthias from the University of Szeged in Hungary, and uh, First, I would like to say kind of a small or 
brief comment on uh, on what has been said in this session. It is very impressive to see all these different realities uh, and all uh, all the initiatives uh, towards the sustainable uh, mobility in in these different realities. Uh, why am I saying this? Because I live in a in a city in Szeged in Hungary, which is uh, not extremely big. So here, basically, you can get everywhere on foot or by bicycle, uh, and it's, uh, it's it's impressive to see, for example, uh, in Mexico, uh, in the presentation of Professor Delgadillo, uh, this Tigrebus uh, initiative, which is working really fine, but also in Turin, Professor Scagni. Uh, who talked about uh, these uh, calculations and uh, sustainable mobility solutions in a, in a bigger city than our, and in Italy where people usually, well, I think everyone has almost a car, so they are moving around uh, quite much in car, really. But, uh, but it, was, it was nice to hear also about uh, Professor Ambariantos' uh, example of their, uh, their initiatives and projects. Uh, my the question that came up to my mind, because here in Sega at our university, we also made some uh, sustainable mobility calculations, so to say, and we are also participating in various projects with the city uh, to, to develop the sustainable uh, ways of uh, commuting for employees. Uh, and one of my questions, or my main question is maybe that when we made these calculations of uh, something similar like uh, in or, you know, in Turin, uh, about, uh, concerning sustainable accessibility index and so on, uh, we, we, we made some uh, publicly available uh, videos, um, educative videos for students, but also for, for you know, the community and so on. Uh, so I would like to ask whether you plan uh, either prof, uh, Professor Scagni or Professor Ambarianto uh, whether you plan to 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 prepare something like that, some uh, publicly available, online available, nice videos uh, about uh, about the results of your of your uh, of your projects and of your of your initiatives, which can then uh, contribute a lot, I guess, to to have people of the university citizens of your universities, but also citizens of your cities. Uh, Move toward the sustainable mobility. Move, move toward sustainable mobility solutions. I, I'm sorry for talking too much, but uh, I hope uh, I managed to make my question. Thank you. So may I respond first? Uh, uh, actually, when we started this project and we actually started to apply this kind of criteria to the rankings to assess parking lots, we were quite uh, worried uh, in the sense that the criteria was quite new. Uh, we tried, of course, to make it as clear as possible to the community. Uh, um, I don't think we made videos, but we made a lot of you know, brochure, leaflets, information available to everybody. But we still were fearing complaints, people uh, arguing, saying that this is nonsense. I want to come by car. You, uh, of course, you can come by car. You just park it outside where it's where it's costly, but you can. But not inside because you don't really need to to stay to stay inside our university with your car. Uh, you, you're coming with your car just to show it off to other people, to other students in your classroom. That's ridiculous, actually, because it's it's true in Italy. Cars are still some kind of social status symbols. So, uh, so yes, of course, making things understood and well known to everybody is a key factor. But uh, our fears were dispelled quite quickly because actually we applied this to one of our branches, the, the, the uh, Luigi Einaudi campus, which is quite big. It's not the whole university. We have a lot of campuses, but this is quite big campus with uh, about 10,000 people coming uh, every day or most, mostly. And there were no complaints. Nobody complained. There were a lot hundreds and hundreds of appliances, uh, people uh, requesting permits, and, you know, they just uh, felt that the results for them was quite honest. So 
in some ways, uh, the, the feeling that uh, regulating this kind of access in a way that is uh, modulated on the on how easy for you is to come by car versus in other ways is something that, which is quite commonplace and quite felt by everybody. So in, information is important, but in, in I would say that in recent years. This, this uh, awareness has increased in all the population and especially in the university population, which is made, of course, by young people. So I don't think this is one of the main problems that we are going to face, even when we, we move to the full uh, implementation of the index. Because uh, really, uh, all the fees that we had to the, having to discuss with single people angry because of their exclusion from the parking uh, permits didn't happen. So an optimistic uh, point of view. Uh, Thank you. Can I answer the question from uh, We were thinking to do two things. The first one is in our experience, uh, our students, our staff and our academics, uh, lecturer, they have to open SSO, single sign-ons, every morning, every day. So in our experience, uh, if we have something to be, uh, to announce to everyone in the, um, in the in the university, we can send it through single sign-on, single sign-on. Uh, it's very effective up to now. And the second one, uh, we are usually using our uh, social media, like, uh, IG, Twitter, or even YouTube, official YouTube, for example, and with short video, we use that. And uh, usually the student also staff, they open, apart from SSO, they also open the social media, official social media from Universitas Bonobor. So I think with those two ways, it's very effective to, if we have something to be announced to our, uh, student and our staff in the campus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for uh, for your answers. Um, yeah, it's good, good, good to have this uh, experience of yours and hear this experience of yours. In the meantime, um, I, uh, I look for some of the videos I was talking about. I may uh, write them in the chat. And if you are interested, you can have a look. They also have English uh, subtitles. So, if any anyone uh, has any idea of producing similar videos, I am also very happy to to, to hear about hear about those. And uh, and it was really uh, nice for me to to hear about all your all your programs and initiatives. So thank you very much. At the at the moment, I would not have more questions. If anything comes up to my mind, I will uh, share it with you. But uh, I would like to ask also the the other participants, the public, <laughs> if they if they may have anything to to hear more about or hear in more details, if they have any questions. Yes, I want to comment that uh, uh, what you say that the difference uh, between us are are tremendous big, uh, and it it uh, corresponds to the city we are installed on because uh, Monterey. The city, uh, the city we are we are uh, in our university is very big. We have five million people. Then the amount of people coming to the university every day is is uh, is a big amount. That, and the public transport is not good. People prefers to go by car. Then we are avoiding the use of cars, uh, supplying this service to the students of a bus transport. Uh, instead of they go with their parents or someone from their family every day moving more than 10 kilometers in the city with a big traffic and <laughs> and several problems. Then, then the, the, the university are suffering the, what the city is suffering also. Then we are trying to 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 have some solutions for us. 
Sure, the university and the city, they are highly connected and they live within each other. So all the problems concern both and it's good to collaborate on the solutions uh, to, to provide sustainable mobility solutions. So mm -hmm. that, is, that is great. And, and, uh, and one other thing that came to my mind that, uh, that is very important in all these uh, terms and in all these projects is to not only to help people use a sustainable method or, or, or solution, but, uh, but also give them the options. Because if they don't have option, if there is not such a big rebus as you have at your campuses, between the campuses, uh, then, uh, then they will go by car. If they have these buses, they might, they might use them. And uh, this may be implied in many other areas as well. Like if you don't want people to buy, uh, this is not about mobility, but if you don't want people to buy plastic uh, bottle water, then you have to have water fountains at your university to give them the solution, uh, the possibility to do otherwise. So, so congratulations on all, all your solutions and thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I think that we have very good uh, discussion, especially uh, the, the co-chair with the invited speakers. Uh, uh, our, our time is, uh, uh, is uh, just about to, to finish it. So uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, our coaches, uh, the four invited speakers and all the participants. Uh, and also thanks uh, our assistant, Jesse. And it's, it's a good session discussion. Thank you. Have a day. Thank you. Good day. So thank you all for being with us today. We surely are seeing you at the virtual workshop tomorrow at 6.30 Taipei time for registration. To join us by clicking the hyperlink of Zoom or YouTube, leading you to be with us again. Good day, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope to meet you again. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye to everyone. See you tomorrow. Greetings yeah. from Russia, uh, Professor Andrei Vasiliev. I would like to thank you for your conference. Thank you very much. Oh, so, thank you. Thank you, Vasily. Uh, I didn't uh, get your response, so sorry. I'm, I'm very sorry. Well, I, I am on site and I was ready to uh, deliver my report. So, I don't know why I was not invited. But anyway, my presentation is uploaded and you may see it, uh, sure. Yes, I think uh, all these participants, they have the chance to, to, to watch your uh, presentation, no problem. Okay, and uh, again, thank you very much for a very interesting conference. And for us, it is very important to participate in uh, international conferences. Okay. Thank you. Okay, have a good day. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much again. Bye bye. <laughs>